Okay, so we, this is troubling because we have all of these moons that should be very solid. They should have just bombarded with craters, look like the moon, yet there are some signs cracks. There's clearly some eruptions on these things. Now, one clue that seems to be potential is at least Io is really close to Jupiter, right? It's I very close. In this in. Picture, my, That's it's right. one of our, both our favorite pictures. It gives a sense of the scale of the thing. Because this is an actual real photo. This isn't an animation. <laughs> this is what it looks like. Yes. So if it was just the radioactive elements, I mean, presumably Io and yep. have the same sort of radioactive elements, maybe a bit less because they're mostly not Io. Io is pretty rocky, but the other moons are mostly ice. That's right. And ice is not radioactive. That's right. So there's not a lot of radioactive, but they do have rock in them. And so, but they're too small. That's right. They wouldn't have enough uh, stuff on there to keep that heat trapped in. It should have long gone. So we really need some other source that can keep the middle molten. So that even now, 4.6 billion years after they formed, they are still producing lava and enthusiastically. I mean, Io is by far the most volcanic thing in the solar system. The number of volcanoes per square meter dwarfs <laughs> the Earth and Venus and anything else. And so, is Jupiter doing something? Well, Jupiter, I don't know what a volcano would look like on a gas planet. Okay, but, right. um, but maybe the fact that Jupiter is so close, uh, I think is what you were getting at, yeah. is suggest it could have something to do with it. So one possibility would be tides. Okay, so we have tides on Earth. Yes, yeah, so the moon goes around yep. and its gravity pulls on the near side of the Earth more. Yep. And the far side is left behind, so you get the two bulges. That's right. Um, and, but could there be something, I mean, that's because of the moon, which is quite small and quite far away from the Earth. But for Io, you've got Jupiter, which is much <laughs> bigger than the moon, much, much, and much. very close. So could you have such, could this these tides be actually causing energy or this a, a massive amount of heat or friction on the planet. Okay, so the first idea might be that you get, here's a simulation, yep. showing a moon that's rotating and also orbiting around Jupiter. Okay, so it's spinning around, going around Jupiter. And what you can see is Jupiter's gravity is distorting it into yep. a sort of teardrop shape. And as it rotates, that's going to constantly be shuffling the surface and, and like needing some dough for bread. Yep. And so this is going to definitely heat it up and stop any crust forming. Yep. But this is also going to waste huge amounts of energy. And that mm. energy is going to come out of the rotation of this moon. That's right. So generally speaking, any moon that's that close in won't stay like this for long. Yep. Because it, as it's trying to spin around its own axis at the same time it's going around Jupiter, uh, that will cause such enormous right. tides. It'll slow down its spin. So it's a bit like I'm going around that's Jupiter. Right. I'm also going around like this. Eventually, but, but, you're, but, gonna get you're, tired. Pulling, you're pulling, you're pulling a, a tide out of me that's, that's slowing right. me down, and eventually I'll just stop and just keep staring at you. And as I go around, I will just keep one face. We and know this is what the moon does for the Earth. That's it right. Because it's one tidally face. locked, right? Yes. And so, in fact, this is what's actually going to happen for these things, because of the enormous tides on Io and the other inner moons mean that they are distorted, but they're always going to keep the same face towards Jupiter. So, so they act just like our moon does around the Earth. And this, as you can see, there are no longer any tidal changes. At short, it's been distorted into the teardrop shape, but it can just sit there and solidify in a teardrop shape, surely. Yep. Um, so you'd think that generally tidal locking will stop you getting heated enormously. Okay. Because you're not no longer trying to fight it. You've just got distorted and just sit you, there. You've accepted it. it. Yes, you're not, you're not rage against the machine anymore. <laughs> um, so... This is generally the case for tidally locked things. They'll yep. be in a nice circular orbit, and they'll always have one face towards Jupiter or the, the Earth or whatever it's going yep. to be. But in the case of Io and some of the other satellites, it's not quite the case because they're actually not in a circular orbit, but in an elliptical orbit. Okay. So here you see the orbit, and yep. you see it's coming in, and it's getting closer. Yep. It's still tidally locked. It's always putting the same face towards Jupiter. But as it comes closer, you're going to get more distorted. That's right. And then further away, you're going to get less distorted. And then, but it keeps doing this as it goes around. So it goes through periods of more distortion, less distortion. And now this so is I've grossly exaggerated how elliptical the orbit is. <laughs> but nonetheless, it's no longer that you're rotating, being pulled this way, and then being pulled that way, and then being pulled this way. What's happening is sometimes you're close to getting pulled a lot, and sometimes you're further away being pulled a little. But that's still going to distort it. That's right, you're still distorting in the same direction. And in fact, the different parts of the surface of Io go up and down by about 100 meters every time they go around an orbit. So every time it gets closer, there's just so much gravity yeah. through this process that it actually physically changes the surface. 
That's right, so it's really you know, squashing and unsquashing it all the time. Now, you wouldn't normally expect things to be in elliptical orbit if it's as close and the tide should so-called circularise the orbit. Yep. The thing that's keeping it in an orbit is what's called an orbital resonance. It's, okay. it's ellipse. Okay. What's happening is you look at the three inner moons, yep. There's their orbits have a pattern. Yeah, so they kind of go... So Io goes fairly normal, but now we get... For every one lap, we get two laps. Yes, yeah, so it's exactly an integer ratio. Europa goes around twice every one time. Yep. Um, and you can see that Ganymede goes around four, four times. times every one time that Io goes around. Okay. Not 4.1, not 3.99. Four. 4.00. 4. Yes. 0. 0. And this is the thing you often get with orbits when things are close together and affecting each other. If it was 3.99 or 2.75, then they'd constantly be pulling each other in different ways. Yep. Um, and that would eventually probably lead to them colliding. So if you want things to be in close orbits and never collide, they're usually going to be in resonant orbits, integer. And so they've reached this resident stable orbit, which means that they're, they're not going to collide, as you said. But they're also... Means the pull of one on the other is predictable. Exactly. You can see they have close encounters at regular times. And the regularity helps because it means they can just stay in these orbits without being pulled yep. to destroy each other. But it also means that they can constantly be pulled out of the circular orbit. Yeah, okay. So they're in elliptical orbits because of the pull of the other moons. And this applies to many of the moons of Jupiter and Saturn. That's right. And this gives us the tidal heating. Ah, so this, the system of these resonant orbits on the outside of some of these moons, plus the massive gravitational pull of Jupiter, means that we're actually creating enough tidal energy, which is heating these moons, keeping them warm on the inside. That's right. So for Io, it's keeping lots of lava going in the middle. It's the closest, it's the strongest tides. And so that's also going to be the hottest, which is going to produce a lot of this you know, enormous volcanic activity, you said. But for the other things like Europa and Enceladus, it's probably producing a liquid water ocean under an ice crust. Ah, so even though we saw that those, those photos where it's kind of cracky on the surface, we think it's actually warmer on the inside. Because it's being heated up by the tides. The tides ah. are constantly distorting it, and that may open cracks and let some of the water out. It's probably some sort of salty, yeah. methane-y brine. Um, that comes out sometimes, like you see in Enceladus, yep. and then it also leaks onto the surface through the cracks, maybe, and, and then solidifies. And this is very exciting because this might be a place for life to exist a liquid water ocean buried under uh, however many, maybe 100 kilometers of icy crust on the surface, uh, could be a great place for life to exist. Mm.